Hi everyone, welcome back to part 54 of my Temtem playthrough. Last episode, we finally got a chance to go against General X and we were able to win the battle, which I think was pretty nice. We also saw the ruins of Talibur's, which is the flying castle. In this episode, we are going to go ahead and move on forward to another castle where the Lord of Belsodo clan is currently hiding. Apparently, he has a weapon which he is going to deploy. So, we do have to try and stop him as soon as possible. It's a pretty interesting storyline, so I'm excited to go ahead and complete it. By the way, here is my team. As you can see, Arcanite is now at level 71, which is way better. Um, I'm hoping to go ahead and level it up once we do reach this castle. Before we move on, I do have to collect a lot of stickers and items that are around here. This is the ruins of Talibus. This is where we ended out in the last episode. It seems that I did miss out. Ah, never mind. I did come back for this one. Alright. I'm trying to be careful and double checking everything to make sure that I'm picking up all of these stickers. We got around five of them, which is really nice. Next up, we are in Bowen Woodlands. This is a new area in the map. It's pretty large and does have a ton of teamers. All of them are Belsodu clan team members. So you'll definitely be able to go ahead and get some experience before you enter the castle. In this case, I think all of these teamers are really good considering that I do have to level up my other team members as well. In any case, I'm hoping to be around level 90 or higher. I wonder if that is possible, but let's see. I'm also gonna, as usual, try to pick out all of the items and try to defeat all of the teamers in a pathway. This time, it seems that my Arcanite is doing pretty well. Alright, that was the first battle. Moving forward, we have another one. Um, let me just heal up my Arcanite. Um, so yeah, I forgot to click on A, so I actually did not heal up my Arcanite. For some reason, this seems to happen at some point where I forget to actually do the task I say. Um, so yes, I do have to be a bit more careful. Decided to go ahead and switch out my Arcanite in this case. We do have a Valesh. I think Valesh is a A grade uh, Temtem, A tier Temtem. It is pretty good. But its typing is a bit unique. I'm not sure if I really like its typing. It is by the way neutral and crystal. Its trade is really good. Jack of all trades is helpful and scavenger trade is really good considering that it gets a bit of HP. Anytime it's part the Temtem or the Temtems in the opponent do go down. In this case, it seems that I did a bit of a miscalculation. Should have just built out my starter as well, considering that Saku is a bit tougher. My target was Valish, but I think I'll go ahead and focus on Saku now. This should be easier, considering that Antan will be able to use Media Swarm, which should take it down in one hit. Apparently, Saku is faster, which is surprising. Another thing, I just recently got to know about this. Apparently, the speed stat is the only stat that you cannot manipulate much in this game. Um, I know that we'll be able to manipulate the other stats, but I don't believe we have seen a candy for speed stat. Um, they are smoothies, I believe, but I'm really not sure about that. I have read in the internet that speed stars cannot be really manipulated much. So I would recommend checking out the speed start of your Temtem when you're catching a newer one. In any case, here's the next teamer. I definitely have to switch out Arknight just to make sure that it gets some experience. As for Magnet, I decided to go into Oshukai. We do have Leolai, I might have to take it down first. It also seems that my Gurundur is not that fast. A bit frustrating, but 
I guess it's all right. Um, if I am gonna play this game again, I'm gonna make sure that the stats in all of my temptons are much better than what I have right now. This time, I just got the temptons I was able to find the very first time and didn't really do much research on the stats. So I guess I could say my temptons are definitely not um, the best out there. You do have a Jateru. Um, if you do see a Jateru, you can just switch into your mental type Temptem. In this case, I didn't. Um, this is mainly due to me not wanting to split up the experience with even more Temptems. But I'm just gonna go with this. Unfortunately, it did take down my Gundur. But hopefully, I'll be able to take it down here. Ah, never mind. Um, let me go into Arc Knight. I wonder if Arc Knight is actually faster. We'll get to see. Oh, never mind. Um, Ohjukai was faster for this turn. There we go. Really have to heal up my team after this battle. We do have more items to pick up. So I'll quickly go ahead and pick them up from the end here. I believe the pathway or the correct one is actually to the north. I believe today's episode is gonna be a bit larger as well considering that I have to complete this whole pathway. Hopefully it doesn't take more than an hour and a half. I think that is what I would dedicate for this episode. Now right here I did have to switch out my starter to Gurundur. I think this should be pretty good. Both Mastone and Nagas over here are part water type so hopefully I'll be able to take them down. I did hit by a pretty hard move here, but thankfully Arcanite was able to survive. I'm hoping to just take down both of these Temtems as soon as possible, although we do get hit by a pretty hard move. I wonder if Arcanite will actually survive the next turn. And it does, pretty good. That is a really good experience for all of my Temtems. Now that we have defeated this tamer, we do get to choose out two options. It also seems that we are up against the castle wall, which is interesting. We're after all making our way over there. Picking up our next sticker. Here's the next tamer. It's a Excalibur's engineer. Interesting. Let's see which sometimes he does have in his team. Only one. Um, Ooh, I wish Arcanite was actually in full health. It would have helped a bit more. You know what, maybe I'll just go ahead and switch it out for now. Decide to go into Gurundur and use Beat Up Bait. Since that Beat Up Bait really didn't do much. We also got hit pretty hard. Um, going with two powerful moves. Yep, there we go. That is really good. Unfortunately, Nagas will not survive this turn, which is pretty sad. I was hoping that it would actually focus on Gundur. There we go. Um, moving forward. Now, this pathway, I believe, is like a S shape. It is like a snake and does have a lot of items. Most of these are due to the castle going down. You can also see the mark on the floor where the castle was dragged down. I think that looks super cool. Unfortunately, the forest here was completely destroyed, which I think is pretty sad. I mean, look at the trees, they are all dead. In this pattern, it seems that we have Mix and Head Giant. Hmm. I wonder if Gundur is the right Temtem for this. We use Rockfall which did pretty good damage on both of them and Hedgein goes down. Pretty good. Let's see which ones we have next. Alright, it's a Raycan. Seeing a Raycan is usually a surprising task. Unfortunately, Gurinder did go down here. Um, Right, there we go. I guess I should have just gone with Mix. Maybe at least I would have taken down one Temtem. 
At this point, I definitely have to go back and heal up my Temtems. Um, I think I'll do that after this battle. As for Aikan, it's gonna go down here as well. Pretty good. I'm glad that the Temtems here are all pretty high in level. This will actually help me level up my team as soon as possible. Picking up this item and there should be another sticker around here. Um, it's right here. There we go. Let me quickly heal up. Now that I'm healed, let me talk to this scientist here. All of these people here have just survived a castle crash and the first thing they do is try to defeat you. It says a lot about how much they respect the Belsoto clan. I really wonder what Professor Constantinos really told them to have them be this loyal to him. Either way, we are able to take down this scientist over here as well. Pretty good. My Temtems are also at level 89, which is much closer. Let me switch out. Um, right, Antan is up next as well. Here we have another item, all healer. But we also have a couple of teamers. Alright, uh, here's the next teamer. She has a Totonite, which is pretty cool to see. I wonder if my Temtems are able to do some damage. Arknight is able to hold on its own, which is really good. Alright, I guess Arknight is really not the one to beat. I'm just gonna switch into Anta and focus on taking down Grandpa first. Um, Electric type move should do very well. Got hit by toxic gas, which is unfortunate. Ah, thought that I was gonna take it down in one hit, but I guess not. Alright, let me focus on taking them down this turn. I believe I'll be able to take down at least one of the Temtem, which I do right here. Uh, Tortonite is a bit more complex, but here we see Tortonite's garden. Hmm, that's a pretty unique move. I think it looks super cool right there. But I believe it's pretty strong, so I do have to go with a powerful fire type move. Usually for toxic type Temtem, I think mental type moves work. But I'm a bit afraid to bring out Tentil as toxic type moves are effective against it as well. Thankfully, Anton is able to do a bit more damage. Um, in this case, let me quickly heal up. I'm just gonna go ahead and use all healer. I guess there is an item that you can actually equip to your Temtem to stop the doom status. Um, but since it's not really being used in every other battle, I don't think that item is that helpful. But we have defeated the steamer. Up next we have a chef. This guy reminds me of the chef we helped back when we were on the flying castle. I'm wondering if it's the same chef. He has a hazrat which is a bit worrying. But um, it's pretty funny that we do see him right here. Hazard has Contagious Trait, which is a pretty cool one. Although, I must say I have to take it down as soon as possible, considering that it is powerful. Decided to switch into Saku. Um, we go with Turbine and we are able to take it down. Pretty cool. Now we do have an item right next to the steamer. Um, I'm quickly going to go ahead and pick it up. Right here. It's a tent. Hmm. It's a pretty interesting item. I might go ahead and equip my Temtems at some point with different items that we are able to find till now. We have another mushroom picker. Unfortunately, she got hit with the whole scenario of the social plan here, which I think was pretty funny. Uh, she's quite worried. I don't think she'll be able to find any more mushrooms here considering that the whole forest is just burnt down. But we do have to request her to go out from here. She has a Baloos. 
Um, and Mushi. I believe we'll be able to take down Mushi in the next turn. I believe we are at the end of this pathway. There are only a couple more tamers left. I also happen to see a update on a particular quest. So we are just gonna try to see how much we can complete on that as well. But there we go. Uh, we have defeated this tamer as well. Pretty good. I think my team is leveling up pretty fine. Um, even though I have not reached the level 90, I think I'm pretty close. So I'll be able to just level them up offline. Here's the last tamer, I believe, in this pathway. Pretty tough tandems right there. Auli and Oshukai definitely have to um, try to take one of them down. That was pretty good damage on Oshukai. But I wonder if our knight will go down in this turn. It just might if they do not target Taku. In any case, surprisingly, we do survive the first turn. Um, I'm definitely going to switch out at this point. And hopefully I'll be able to do some damage. I believe Oshukai will go down if Saku survives, which it didn't. Uh, I should have guessed that. That's alright, we do have Garunder up in front. I guess I could go with Nagais. I was trying to avoid it considering that it is at level 89. But at this point I'm just gonna take it. One of them is now down. Lucky for me, Auli does go down in this turn as well. And this is mainly due to Gurinder. Up next, we have two more Temtems. Right. Um, hmm. I definitely have to heal up Gurinder. There we go. We do get hit by Karma, but... Ooh. Alright. I am guessing that I have to level up my Temtems. Granite could have gone down there, but I'm guessing that the special attack stat on Gurinder is not that great. Either way, we are able to take it down combined with two moves. Yukama survives as well. I believe Yukama is one of the better water type Temtems out there. We have Platymos, but if you're not using Platymos, I would definitely recommend Yukama. Uh, it's pretty powerful and unique as well. Either way, we are able to defeat her as well. Alright, this was definitely a tough journey. At this point, we are almost at the end. Talking to this small girl here, Merida, she talks about her lost bow. I believe I find it right here. Yep. Um, we also can collect the sticker. Going back to her, we can talk to her and see what she has to say. We ask her on Aina and she informs that Aina was the former dojo master of proper town. Huh. That's a bit of a lore I did not guess before. I'm surprised and intrigued. Definitely something to check out. Um, I also have to try and collect all of the mushrooms. Since we are at the end here, I believe this is where we have to go to. This is the secret entrance that Lady Lottie was talking about. But in this case, I'm guessing that everyone now here knows about it. Um, I'm just gonna leave it at that and make my way back to proper town. That is the best course of action. We do have to go ahead and try to find Aina. Um, the first thing to do is go ahead and talk to the dojo master as this is where we get to know that Aina was present. Talking to him, he says that she left not long ago. She told me that she had started a new life. Huh. I'm guessing she decided to go ahead and leave the uh, position up to Percival here and then move out to Zdai. She's right now in the academy here. We can definitely go ahead and talk to her. The one thing I will warn you is that she will battle you I am not prepared for that I mean I really didn't know that we had to have a battle against her to kind of prove her that we have now improved 
Of course, she oh. is in this classroom. She tells us that it is time for her to go ahead and start her own life. After all, seeing that we are actually living our life as well, she decided to enroll in the academy <laughs> here, which I think is pretty nice. Um, but oh. she does challenges, which is frustrating. I can tell you that her battle is pretty mm-hmm. tough. She does switch out her temptations oh. just like General X, mm-hmm. but a bit more. Um, I would say impromptu. You'll see me struggle in the battle here. I did try fighting her, but I actually lost. Um, this is the battle where I wasn't able to really win it. I think I was focusing more on Aknight, and that kind of made me lose the battle. She does start with Typhu and Shalant. Now Typhu has a pretty unique uh, item that makes it much. Beefier than it is, which caused me more issues. As you can see, that did absolutely nothing. It also has nature conversion, and I believe Scarewold over there has heavy armor. All of these items are somewhat contributing to the fact that I'm not able to really do much. She also immediately switches out her temptems, which is a bit frustrating. Um, this is the first time I'm going against a boss battle, and I'm about to get my uh, my whole team destroyed. <laughs> Basically, this is how your boss battle is gonna be at the end of the game. Uh, of course, Aina here is not the boss battle, but she is a challenging um, trainer or a teamer. It is understandable; she was the last dojo master. Although the current dojo master is not this good, she has a lot of nature type temptems. This is surprising. Here's a Kinu. All right, I'm doing pretty good against Rikan. Unfortunately, it does have a lot of held items, which is irritating. It also has motivator, which is healing itself up. At this point, my game decided to crash. But when I did come back, she had switched out her Rikan with Taifu. I'm not sure if I'll be able to really help with Oshukai up in front, but we're just gonna go with it. Um, Taifu has heavy armor, which is annoying. I believe heavy armor is raising up its defense stat, and natural conversion is probably a trait that changes its move type to the one it's facing. Uh, it's a trickier trait and quite helpful if you do have it in a team. She decided to switch out both of her temptems. Shalant has um, some kind of item which I'm guessing is helping it boost its moves. Hmm. Welcomer, huh? I wonder what that trait is. I really have to go through some of these traits to understand what they do. Hedgine is. Of course, it's gonna go down for a electric type move. Unfortunately, I completely forgot about that and for some reason targeted Shalon instead of Hedgein. These temptants are at level 90 as well, so they are pretty powerful. For the next turn, she did switch out into Scarewood. Ah, never mind. That was pretty bad. I believe that is a move from Shalon. I'm hoping to just take down Chalant, which I am guessing I won't be able to. Let's see how this goes. Decided to use a full revive on Antan. She brings in Kinu, which is understandable. I used Naga's Fury and we were able to do a bit more damage, but finally not on Scarewolf. As you can see, Scarewolf has its defense up and its speed stat up as well. Bringing back in my Antan, I'm hoping to do some damage on Kinu. Going with Meteor Swarm, uh, she immediately switches Kinu out into Hedgein. And. Ooh, break and. Huh. This is tough, uh, as you can see. I did struggle quite a bit on this battle. I believe once I do actually take down the boss of this game, probably I'll be able to come back and work on this battle. 
maybe at that point i might have a higher level symptom and better moveset which will be able to tackle her ai he almost took down rican and shalant but unfortunately they are still holding on um i'm running out of stamina which is a bit difficult i did try using a couple of my items but i do see that it is actually a bit of a beast at this point she switches back into head time and rekan goes down there we go at least one symptom is now down she brings in skywalt i'm hoping to take down head time as it is at red health um we do get hit pretty hard by skywalt Hachan goes down, which is good. That's the second attempt. As for Scarabolt, it is still surviving. Unfortunately, Antan goes down at this point. Had to bring in my Afghan. She goes into Kinu. Um, hmm. might have to just use one of these moves. Use the electric type move on Scarabolt, which was kind of my mistake. Um, I just have to spawn with a poison type move on Kinu. I lost my Arknight at this point as well. Um, all right, let's try using couple of full restores. There we go. Got hit by a beta burst and a fire burst. Oof, that was pretty tough. Get a chance to use Noxious Bomb, but are not able to knock out Kinu. Hmm. Let's see what will happen in the next turn. She switches out Scarabolt into Shalant. Shalant, I believe, will go down pretty soon if I'm able to hit it. I'm able to take down Kinu, which is good. And right here, I'm able to take down Shalant as well. I believe we are. She is down to her last two temptems, which is Scarabolt and Typhoo. At this point, I was hoping to heal up. Unfortunately, I ran out of Bomb Plus. The only things I have is Full Restore, and I really didn't want to use them up. Uh, considering that I don't have enough Banans, the only thing I could do is just uh, hope to survive another turn, which I definitely don't at this point. That is how I lost this battle. Uh, we were so close. I wish I had one more turn. Ooh, never mind. I actually have Antan, um, but I believe Antan will go down. Yep, it got knocked out in one hit. I guess Taifu was the only Temtem that was left. But we'll come back to this battle. It's all right. Um, <laughs> at the point of recording this, when I was playing through this game, I was so frustrated after that battle. I was really doubting myself and wondering if I'll be really able to take down the boss battle. But we are just going to keep this one aside. As you can see, I actually took a bit of time before I took back my controller. Um, so yes, this was definitely a pretty bad battle. Either way, um. I think I'm just going to go ahead and complete one more quest before I do end out this episode. It's the quest for the mushroom. We are almost there. We do have a couple of logs right here in the front of Green Grand Forest. So I'm just going to go ahead and explore them. First one is here. We're able to find a shiitake over here as well. Moving forward. We have two more logs and I do have to find only one more mushroom. I'm able to find it right here. Pretty good. Now that we have this, I have to make my way to the other town. So let me quickly use Super Scent and move forward. After that frustrating battle, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and level up my Temtems. I definitely need to look into the Staminas and other items that I might need. But here we are. This is the inn. And we have to talk to her. Once we do give her the mushrooms, she asks us to find another item. Hmm. I wonder if I'll be able to find this one. I doubt it, but let's see the map. 
Ooh, all right. We do have a marker. So let me make my way there. Um, I believe it is in a dead end pathway that I've explored in the last episode. Oops. All right. Um, here it is. Now that we get the item, we have to head back. Luckily, I did not get any more encounters. I was able to put up another scent. Going back to the inn, we have to give this item to get the special soup from her. At this point, someone else comes in. Um, she's a bit furious that we actually got all of the items which she was looking for as well. So she does actually challenge us for a battle. At this point though, I'm just gonna go ahead and try to defeat her. She has a team full of fire temptums. She also has the Arcanite which is super nice. Um, but of course, I definitely have to switch out one of my temptum at some point to take down the mushroom. Right now, we are able to take down Arcanite which is good. Up next, um, she has Wolfie. All uh, right, I might have to switch out. Um, all right, I switched my Saku and I think this is the better choice. And it was a good thing or else the guys would have gone down. We definitely have to use Turbine on Mushu to take it down. As for Wolfie, I am guessing that um, Fire Type move is really not that effective. At least we are able to take down, um, oh never mind, we did not take down Mashuk. Uh, I was hoping that it would knock itself out, which it didn't. Unfortunately, it did a great deal of damage on Antan and Saku, so I do have to be a bit more careful. Decided to go into Arc Knight. Hopefully this one works. Um, Using harmful microwaves, we are doing pretty good damage on Wolfie. Unfortunately, Antan goes down over here. For the next turn, I'm switching into Gurinder. I'm just gonna focus on Wolfie and then take down Mushuk. Apparently, both of my temptems are slower somehow. Thankfully, Wolfie does go down here. And so does Mashu. She has knocked out two of my temptems before I knocked her temptems out, so it's pretty frustrating. I believe, yep, Half Knight goes down here as well, which is frustrating. I might have to bring in Tapu once more. I'll probably try and heal it up. Decided to switch into Oshukai for now. Try using a random move until Rockfall is unlocked. At least toxic type moves are not that effective against me, so that is good. Mashuk is down. Hmm. Alright, we have another Temtem to take down. This is the last one. I'm going to try and use Rockfall. And it absolutely did nothing, which is um, not what I was expecting. Let me just try and use random moves that I already have. Um, I could switch into Nagais, which I'm really not sure how helpful it would be. Right, base jump did pretty well using black hole and base jump. Unfortunately, it took down a guys, which is annoying. I was able to use base jump, but that absolutely did nothing. For the next turn, I'm just gonna use Noxious Bomb and wait for another turn on Ushkai. This battle was also brutal. Considering that I had two different battles that were super tough, I started doubting whether my team is actually equipped to handle the upcoming battles. I'm pretty sure we are gonna have some tough battles against the boss. Either way, we finally do win the battle and she disappears. 
now that it's done uh, we get a chance to go ahead and get the special item and end that quest pretty good i think this is a pretty good place for me to end out this episode in the next one we are going to enter the castle and explore it hopefully we get to know more details on what we are supposed to do over there all right i hope you all enjoyed this episode if you did please put a like and if you haven't yet please consider subscribing to my channel as it really helps me a lot if you'd like to support me more on patreon or coffee check out my links down in the description but i'll see you all in the next one Thank you.